I'll tell you how it is. What's good, everyone? It's your boy, Token Drew. And I'm here with a new edition of Drew's Reviews. Series where I watch some shit, smoke some shit, and talk some shit. If you can't tell by the purple garb and the ha 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 on the hat, I just got back from seeing the movie Joker. So that's what we're gonna talk about here on this first edition, season two of Drew's Reviews. Granted, there's only been like three episodes so far, but you know what I mean? Shit happens. Let's get right to it. Directed by Todd Phillips and starring Joaquin Phoenix as Arthur Fleck, AKA the Joker, as well as coming from the movie Deadpool 2, Old Girl Domino. We have Zazie Beats and a superstar, surprisingly, in this movie, we got Robert De Niro playing Murray Franklin. And then someone who looks hella familiar to me, but I really can't place him. I'll IMDB this guy and throw some shit up about him at the bottom when I'm actually doing this editing later. However, we have Brett Cullen as Thomas Wayne. There are some other characters I can mention such as Arthur's mom or the doctors or the various side characters, but let's talk about this movie. <laughs> this movie is rated R and it deserves it. You can't tell a Joker movie that's not rated R, real talk. So I'm glad, glad this movie decided to go for a hard R. So don't bring your kids to that movie. And in fact, don't bring your kids over to this channel either. Yeah, I got toys and shit. That's that review them. But this ain't a place for kids. <laughs> so this movie, overall, I thought it was a really, really dope ass movie. So the scoring for this movie is as follows. And I'm gonna try and do this for all of them. I'm gonna start all of them off with 100 points. And then we're gonna add or subtract going from there. And then the final movie score, it could be over 100. It could be less than 100. Let's see how this shit pans out. So let's talk about some cons first, get the bad shit out the way. So the movie has an overall slow feel to it. I don't know what you were expecting going into a Joker movie. I don't know what I was expecting going into a Joker movie, but it definitely has more storytelling than what we're used to in a movie based off a comic character. So for that, I'm going to take away 10 points. Only because you might feel bored in some parts. There are a couple parts in the movie that made me laugh out loud. And I don't think they were supposed to make me laugh out loud. It, it made me laugh because of the implications if it was true. And it kind of took me out of the seriousness of the movie because it was like, yo, if this is what they're going for in this universe, that is so convenient for what the Joker ends up becoming. And another part that made me laugh was the last two deaths. If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. I mean, is it really a spoiler if you're a Batman fan? Let's just say you can't have a movie in this universe without showing these bastards getting killed. And it made me laugh because it's like, again? How many times have we seen this scene play out? How many times do you have to show it again and again? And I mean, shit. We haven't seen Uncle Ben get shot a whole bunch of times. You know what I'm saying? So, why? Why? It made sense in this movie, but I'm still going to take off 20 points altogether for both of those points, making me personally, the comic fan, laugh out loud when I wasn't supposed to laugh. And I don't think the people next to me appreciated it, but, dude, that shit was funny to me. Peace out, 20 points. I do appreciate that they kept in one part from the uh, Batman killing joke. Uh, storyline that Arthur is a failed comedian you know so that was really cool seeing that continue on um, there was also a reveal the, re the reveal about Arthur's mom and the condition she had 
I, I, I don't know if I liked it. You know what I'm saying? It just seemed... We're going to go into spoiler territory here because it's hard for me to talk and not be able to talk freely. But his mom was crazy. You know what I'm saying? His mom was crazy. And it's revealed that, you know, she thinks that she was knocked up by Thomas Wayne, which is the part that I said made me laugh, which made it lose some points earlier. You know, it's like, come on, really? Arthur is, you know, Batman's stepbrother. The Joker is related to Batman. But then they kind of retcon that and save themselves mid movie by saying that his mom is crazy, has, has uh, delusions, and she adopted this kid. And his name and background is unknown. So yeah, that's cool that they kept that you know whole unknown as aspect of the Joker. So let's add back 10 points for that. But the fact that his mom was crazy and you know, and then it is revealed like the, the more backstory they gave to the Joker, you know, I don't wanna I don't wanna tell you the whole movie over here, but it just seemed very, very convenient. I felt sorry for him, you know what I'm saying? And the Joker, the clown prince of crime, doesn't need to be sympathetic, you know? I get I get it for the movie, and I get it for the fact that, you know, they're, it's, it's not always about us comic fans, you know? But if he were to snap after having a bad day after a bad day, I kind of feel like I would appreciate that more. I didn't need his mom to be crazy. I didn't need... Him to have gone through the childhood he went through. Like, come on, man. You know, I know people who went through that kind of childhood. They didn't put on clown paint and start killing people. You know what I mean? So, let's take off 10 for that. Still, it made sense. You know, uh, throughout the whole movie, Arthur has these fits of laughter. And it's really cool because you don't know if he's laughing because he's sad, laughing because he's crazy. He carries around a little card with him saying that some sort of neurological... Some sort of neurological, a brain disorder, a, <laughs> and it causes him to keep on laughing uncontrollably, which he does a great laugh, you know. Is it my favorite laugh? I'd say no, but it's still a really good laugh. So I do like how they explain that, like you see his insanity throughout the movie, and I really do appreciate that. Let's add back on 10 points. You know, my man goes through some shit in the movie, for real. He goes through some shit. But I'm gonna add on another 10 points because the acting is phenomenal in the movie. There, are, The body count is not as high as I'd hoped for a Joker movie. I'm not gonna subtract or add points for this because, you know, he's not, he's not a slasher, you know, but I like how all of the murders in the movie were <clears throat> actually happening in the movie it wasn't in his head there are some things that happened that were just happening in his head but there are still consequences to his actual actions you know when he killed somebody and he got his hands dirty a lot you know in fact i want to say with the exception of like maybe one cop and some shit happening at the end i think all of the deaths in the movie were done by his hand and it's great that that shit actually happened you know there is a, a film theory episode which I've been a fan of film theory and game theory for years. I know he's never gonna see this shit, but Matt Pat had a theory that the Joker was all in his head and that everything we saw in the movie with the confident Joker, with the, you know, the end result face paint was all in his head. It was all a symbol of his insanity. After the first instance where, you know, you see a glimpse of his insanity. I thought that Matt Pat was right. I actually was about to get on Twitter right there and be like, damn it, hashtag Matt Pat was right. However, he wasn't right, and I'm glad about that shit. Oh, thank God. I am glad that you were wrong. Not on some hater shit, but just because I like the idea that it's not all in his head and that this is the actual Joker in the, in the movie and not just like how Gotham made it where that kid wasn't actually Joker, but then it was Joker, but then he wasn't Joker, and then he took his face off, and I stopped watching after like season two, so I don't know what's going on. And I'm actually keeping these sirens in in the background because of the subject matter for this episode, so it kind of fits with, you know, us talking about the Clown Prince of Crime. 
the fact that it wasn't all in his head, I really, really appreciated that. I thought that was really cool. You know, our boy Arthur goes through some shit in that movie, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, he goes further and further down the rabbit hole. And the whole time, I'm just like, yo, this is actually, hell yeah, they're doing a movie where the villain stays villainous, you know? They even tried to call him an anti-hero or a vigilante at some point in the movie. Uh, back when they didn't know it was him that did what he did, but, you know. And I think it's dope that some of the more extreme shit, like when he kills somebody on live TV, that shit's actually happening. That's not in his head. The movie is shot fantastically as well. Fantastically. You know, I've been talking for a while and I forgot to add or subtract points. So let's give it another plus 10 points. So in summation, I want to say that I thought that this was an amazing movie. Better than I thought it would be. My scoring leaves it at 100 points. But I, I think my scoring system was a bit flawed. So I'm going to change that up and plan that out a bit better. Uh, I still give it an A though. You know. I think that this is a great, great depiction of the Joker. Joaquin Phoenix, real talk, I never really liked him as an actor. I don't know why. I just never really saw him in shit that I appreciated. But this movie, he did a great job. He did a great job. It's a powerful performance. Might even win some awards. He's not... Is he the best Joker? Let's discuss that. I say he's the most realistic. Could I see him as the Joker... Facing off against Batman? I don't know, honestly. Honestly, I think that he stands good on his own. He has a really good laugh. I don't think he's going to be as iconic as Heath Ledger. But he's definitely better than Jared Leto as far as this Joker depiction. I like this one better than the last shit we saw in Suicide Squad. You know, I I really don't like the fact that both this Joker and Heath Ledger, their their skin is, you know, it's makeup. It's not painted on. It's not permanent. You know, I, I, I kind of feel like that's really needed. But, yo, this movie's brutal. You know what I'm saying? This is a really good Joker performance. I say I liked him a bit better than Jack Nicholson. I'd put him just under Heath Ledger. You know, Heath Ledger did great as a Joker against Batman. This Joker, he still did good, but could he match up against the Dark Knight? Honestly, I don't know. So I put him underneath Heath Ledger. Put him above the other two. I mean, he's close with Jack Nicholson, but I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's just nostalgia and shit talking, but still a good movie. Still a good movie. Go check it out. And while you're here, make sure you like, share, and subscribe this. Leave me a comment and check my channel out. I do reviews. I do figure reviews all the time. So that's kind of my thing. But I'm out this bitch. Make sure you all live up, smoke out, and game on. Thanks for watching. You got the goons, got the gas to change your lives. It's dark now. The boy wonder. I'm a force of nature, walking storms and thunder.